I'm Ed Wilkinson and welcome to On the Block. Today we have a very interesting guest. We're going to be talking with Father Tom Colucci, who is uh, assigned to the Archdiocese of New York at St. Mary, Mother of the Church up in Fishkill, New York. How you doing, Father Tom? Welcome. Very, very good. Glad to be here. Very good. Now listen, I understand that before you were ordained, and you were just ordained a short time, but you had a full career as a fireman, right? Uh, yes, I did. Right. I was on the New York City Fire Department and uh, did 20 years with the fire department. I worked nine years in the North Bronx, and then I was eight years as a lieutenant in Lower Manhattan, and my last three, I was a captain in Midtown. Uh, truck company, Ladder 21. So the, the first thing that we always ask firemen is, where were you on 9-11? Yeah. Were uh, you in the midst of that? Oh uh, yes, uh, fortunately I was. Uh, I was working in Lower Manhattan at that time, 19th and 7th, Engine 3. I just got off work that morning, and then when I heard the towers got hit, I was recalled to the scene. Mm -hmm. I went down there, I got to the scene with a, uh, some men from my firehouse, and one tower was already down, so I was on the scene and digging through the rubble when the second tower came down. Five guys from my firehouse were killed, and I knew wow. about a hundred of the other guys. Well, a lot of guys from Lower Manhattan were killed, so I knew a lot, of them, but I was on the scene that day. What did you see down there that day? Because people have described it, and it really sounded like a piece of hell down there. Uh, pretty much was, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just a lot of chaos. Uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, it was, it was hard to describe. We were very much in shock. Mm -hmm. the whole time. We just went down there. We realized we had a, a job to get done. The initial report, there were 40,000 people trapped. You know, so we just immediately went digging through the rubble and uh, everybody came piling in there. You know, there was a lot of rescue workers that came in. So Did you that, actually uh, find anybody? Dig uh, anybody out of the uh, rubble? There were a few units. There were two fire department units that were trapped in the stairwell. They got dug out. But mostly, uh, no. It was basically a recovery operation. There were a few people that were trapped. They found, the, they found Father Michael Judge body and they carried him to the uh, church on Barclay Street, St. Peter's on Barclay Street. You knew Father Michael Judge, didn't you? Uh, yes, I did. He was His church was on West 31st Street in Manhattan and uh, at that time my firehouse was on West 19th Street. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew Father Mike. I was the Holy Name delegate for my fire uh, my firehouse and I, I would meet with Father Mike occasionally. He would stop into the firehouse, mm -hmm. see how the guys were and uh, yes, I, I knew him uh, fairly well. Yeah. Yes. Is it true what they say about firemen being good chefs, good cooks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that, that, that was my biggest surprise when I got to the firehouse. I thought it would be pizza, hot dogs and hamburgers. <laughs> the guys are actually very, very good cooks and yeah. I, I learned how to cook and uh, yeah, we, we, ate, we ate pretty well and uh, mm -hmm. the guys were very, very good. And then yeah. uh, later on, I, I, when I retired, I became a Benedictine monk and the first thing I went First day I met with the abbot of the monastery, he heard I was a fireman, he goes, good, we need a cook. Get in the kitchen, start cooking. So, but uh, yeah, so there was, we ate very well. We, even my Bronx firehouse, we had a guy won a cooking contest, uh -huh. the Frugal Gourmet. That's, uh -huh. That was a popular show back in the 80s. And yeah. he went out to Chicago, was on this cooking con contest. And yeah. even at my Engine 3 firehouse, a little bit after 9-11, Gordon Elliott, he runs a cooking show. Yeah, he, right. he came by and uh, we did a, uh, we cooked shrimp scampi or something for him. <laughs> He had all brought his whole crew in, and uh, so the, yeah, the guys were, were very, very good. A lot of the guys, well, their their wives work, and so they had to like learn to cook for their families, and so yeah. it was. Uh, yes, the guys were very, very yeah. good cooks. Nice. I want to go back to the aftermath of 9/11 a little bit because uh, for the men on the fire department, it wasn't all over after the fire was put out. I mean, uh, you spent months and a lot of time down there afterwards, didn't you? Yes, but you know that initial day we went down, but it was like. You saw the best in humanity and the worst in humanity that day would happen, but then you saw a lot of the recovery and the guy, and everybody was there, digging there for weeks and weeks and weeks, and we were, they were down there frantically for the first couple of weeks digging, because hoping for survivors, but there was there were very few, yeah. was most, and then they realized by October it was just basically a recovery operation, but mm -hmm. but that made it very very tough because you had to still work shifts in your firehouse, you know, mm -hmm. the fires didn't stop, the ambulance calls didn't stop, you know, mm -hmm. you had to still go out there. So you needed uh, people at the, on, in the firehouse. Then you had to go down to the site and dig. Mm -hmm. And then on your day off, there were funerals. And every weekend they posted funerals. Uh, and then you tried to make as many as you can. So it just, yeah. you know, so it just didn't, the grieving didn't. How, how many people who died that day would you say you knew? I knew about a hundred. Wow. Uh, five from my firehouse. And then uh, Probably about 30 others fairly well, but I knew about, there was a lot of them were from Lower Manhattan. Right. So I knew that the fire, this fire, I saw five, this saw seven. Right. So I knew a lot of the guys by face. And, but I, 30 probably really well, 
hundred casually and mm -hmm. five from my firehouse. How do, you, how do you keep your own self balanced going through a time like that? Because I mean, it's got to be a great deal of uh, sadness and depression and going to funerals. I mean, how do you try to maintain a balanced uh, approach? Well, I think a lot of faith came in. Uh, faith helped us, kept us strong, and then you know, we had support from the other firemen and firefighters. Uh, and we had, you know, we had to support each other. And then the, the people in the community around the city and around the country were, were great supporting us. And, so that, that encouraged us, but we just focused, you had to stay focused, you had a job to do, and then, you know, recovering, and then also you had a job to do, still put out fires, and mm -hmm. yes, there was a lot of grieving, the funerals were brutal, but you just had to, this, this is what we have to do. Yeah. Now, all, that, all through that time as a fireman, uh, were you a practicing Catholic? Did you remain oh, a Catholic? You always close to the church? Oh, yes, I, I, I always was a very devout Catholic growing mm -hmm. up. I went to Catholic grammar school, high school, and then in college, I was involved with campus ministry. And even when I got out of college, I was kind of initially thinking about uh, uh, being a priest. I was kind of initially thinking about it, and it's, you know, and uh, you know, even actually, it, it's, it all started. Uh, it's kind of a funny story. I, I actually took a year off from college after my uh, sophomore year. I wasn't doing well. <laughs> I was a phys ed major. I, I went up to Cortland State up in upstate New York. Yeah. And, I kind of had like a 1.8 GPA in phys ed. <laughs> so I took a year off from college and I was home and uh, going to daily mass and the, my pastor came up to me and said, Tom, do you ever think of being a priest? And I said, Monsignor, please. <laughs> I just flunked out of college as a phys ed. I don't think I'm priestly material. Said, oh, Tom, you have very good qualities and blah, blah, blah. I think you could be a good priest. He gave me, he encouraged me. He gave me the liturgy of the hours. That's the pre prayer the priest yeah. recite every day. And I started going to daily mass, and I went back to college again at Springfield College in Massachusetts, and mm -hmm. got involved with campus ministry. And I was so it was always a you know devout going to daily mass and praying and reading scripture. And then, well, then what, I got, what, what did you think you were going to do though with the phys ed degree and then going to Springfield? I mean, did you come out thinking you're going to be a fireman? <laughs> uh, no. Well, yeah. How, how that happened was I, I graduated from college in '79. And I taught phys ed for about uh, four years. I was in the field and I was okay. doing all right. And then I, I worked at John Jay College in uh, criminal justice in Manhattan for a uh -huh. year. Uh -huh. And uh, there a lot of guys were training for the next fire department test. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like in 83, 82, 83. And uh, so somebody said, well, Tom, why don't you take the test? And I was in very good shape back then. Very good shape back <laughs> You're then. You're still in pretty good shape. <laughs> used to run marathons and triathlons and all that. And I said, ah, you know, I want to be, you know, I got my phys ed degree. I want to be something. And, Somebody suggested, just take the test, you know, just take the test. I said, all right, so I took the test, did well, and then I, and eventually I got called, and I said, hey, you know, let me put the fire, uh, phys ed career on the hold, and let me try this fire thing out, because mm -hmm. the only happy guys I ran into were firemen. They, they, <laughs> they, only, all my, and they were the only guys that were happy. They, they enjoyed the job, they loved the job, they couldn't wait to go to work, it was yeah. great, it was fantastic, and running into burning buildings is fun, I, that, that sounds like insanity, you know, but, you know, they, they were, they were just, they were the only happy guys I know. <laughs> I get with, like, together with all my college and high school buddies and everybody was miserable in their jobs and the only happy guys were the firemen. So I said, well, so I got on the job in, in uh, February of 85 and I, was, I went to the fire academy with much trepidation. My, my mom was horrified being a fireman, oh my God, you know, but got on, I loved the job and I got assigned, my first firehouse was Engine 81 ladder 46 in the North Bronx and it was great nine great years there it was fantastic uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about uh, you know your own happiness as a fireman but we're gonna take a quick break now we'll talk with father Tom Colucci you're watching on the block stay with us we'll be right back welcome back to on the block we're talking today with father Tom Colucci and we talked to father Tom about your career as a fireman and were you happy as a fireman? Did you enjoy being a yeah, fireman? Yeah, I absolutely loved it. It was, yeah. uh, it was a great 20 years. Uh, the, the guys I worked with were fantastic. My first firehouse was in the North Bronx, and a lot of them came to my ordination at St. Patrick's last year. They bought me a beautiful gold vestment, embroidered the brothers wow. from Engine 81, Ladder yeah. 46, Brothers Forever. So they were all at my first mass in the ordination. Then I got promoted to lieutenant, and I was down in Engine 3 for eight years, and they, they gave me a beautiful chalice for my ordination. Wow. And a lot of them came to the ordination. Besides the World Trade Center, uh, tell us, did you have any stories about running into burning buildings? Like you said before, these guys have to be crazy to be running oh, into Oh, yeah, my first fire. <laughs> you never forget your first fire as a fireman. Yeah. So I was, you go, when you get uh, called to the fire department, they, you go to a fire academy for like six weeks. I think it's a little longer now. And put out make-believe fires. It's during the day, there's safety net 
cats around. It's all nice, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so then you get assigned to the firehouse. You put out real fires. We're, I never forget. We were, it was in the, the Bronx. It was like two o'clock in the morning. You know, it was like March. It was dark. Riding on the fire truck, and, and I looked. There was fire coming out like the whole top floor of this wow. building, and everybody's running out of the building and I was like, oh, we're going in there. And I went in and couldn't see anything. <laughs> yeah. it, was, wow. it was dark and hot and you know, I never, my heart was beating. Uh, oh yeah, there was a couple instances like that. There were, like, we're going in there, but you know, we, have, we had to do it and do it. And you have a good team of guys with you, so you, yeah. you get the job done. And yeah. what was the thoughts about priesthood at this point, as you're going through the uh, Well, I always maintain being a very good Catholic, uh, going to, I tried to go to daily mass, and I kept reading the liturgy of the hours. I was doing that. Uh, you know, I'd squirrel away a little corner in the firehouse to do it. And, and then when I got towards the end of my career, uh, it was around 2002, I had like three years to go. I think, you know, maybe, you know, maybe I'd like to be a priest. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, did, I had a normal life up at that point. I did some dating and had my own place. Mm -hmm. uh, in Rockland County, but I figured maybe I'll be a priest when I retire. So I met with the vocation director for the archdiocese and told him I'm Tom the fireman. I'd love to come, uh, like to be a priest when I retire. Oh, great! We never had a fireman become a priest. Never had a fireman. That's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I was the first retired fireman. There was another guy in the, the '60s. He did a couple years on the job, then left. I think he became a marinol. But I was the first retired. Mm -hmm. There were two retired police officers, but I was the first fireman. So I met with the vocation director. I told him my plan, and then, unfortunately, my last year on the job, I got I got hurt in an explosion. You were seriously injured, right? Yeah. Uh, well, tell yeah, us I, about that. What happened? Yeah. I literally got blown up. <laughs> wow. It was an explosion in Lower Manhattan in the basement of this building. It was a big gas leak and fire, hmm. and I got blown up. I hit my head against the wall. I had a blood clot on the brain. I had two brain surgeries. Uh, I even received last rites. You can see it worked up here. <laughs> here, Ed. <laughs> and then I spent a month in Long Island College Hospital on wow. Atlantic yeah, Avenue. Sure. You know, the firemen were coming by every day visiting me. Then I got released. And then uh, they let you go back on duty after that? No, I met with the medical board for the fire department. It says, you gotta, you gotta retire. So uh, my surgeon said, you better take it easy. So I did the logical thing. I joined him, entered a monastery. A monastery. <laughs> now, this is, all right, so you got this monastic thing going on now. Uh, why did you decide to join a monastery? Well, in 2002, I was, when I decided to become a priest, I, I started visiting in a monastery upstate New York called Mount Savior Monastery, mm -hmm. near Elmira Corning. So Benedictines? Yes, Benedictine. Mm -hmm. I was meeting with the abbot. He's the guy in charge. Right. And I told him, I'm Tom the fireman. When I retire, I'd like to become a priest. So I was meeting with him. I was going up there like twice a year, met with him, Father Martin Bowler. He was, he was a saintly man. And he, you know, he would talk to me, he was very nice. But then I got hurt. And then uh, I just, I would tell everybody the idea of going to the seminary for six years made my, my head hurt more. <laughs> so I decided I don't want to go to the seminary and study. My head is still sore. So I, I talked to this abbot and I said, can I uh, enter the monastery? He goes, sure, yeah, we'd love to have you. We need a cook. <laughs> we need somebody to plow the snow up here. And it was funny, I left when I was, my last day at the firehouse, I looked around, I was the oldest guy at 48. And I go to the monastery. I'm the youngest guy by like 20. 20 years up there. Now, what, what did the firemen think when you told them I'm going off to a monastery? Did they think uh, you were nuts? Or? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, well, they, <laughs> well, they knew I wanted to be a priest, you know, so I was, I was thinking about that. And uh, so they weren't too surprised. But I, you know, then I, but I, they knew I was hurt. My, my head was, half my head was numb. My hmm. right hand was off. And so I went there basically to recover. And I was there and I made my solemn profession. That's like a big day. In so the how, many, how many years were you up there in the monastery? I, I did seven years. Wow. Then I made my solemn profession in 2009. Then they sent me to a Benedictine monastery, uh, seminary mm -hmm. in La Trobe, St. Vincent's. It's so, outside Pittsburgh. So I started my priesthood studies there. So you were online, you were like a, a, a monk, a brother, was, right. so to speak, and then they said you're gonna go on for priesthood, right? Right, so I did my first three years of the seminary at St. Vincent's in La Trobe with the Benedictines. and then. While I was there, I, you know, I decided I wanted to get back to my first love, being a diocesan priest. Mm -hmm. So I met with the vocation director again at New York, and I mm -hmm. did the paperwork, a whole lot of paperwork had to go to Rome. I was in vows, as in solemn profession, so I had to yeah. get released from my vows, and I entered the seminary at uh, St. Joseph's in the fall of 2012. Before we talk about St. Joseph's, uh, let me ask you about what was your daily life like in the Benedictine monastery? I mean, a lot of praying, right? Oh, yes. Regimented yeah. praying? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, we, we usually got up about four o'clock in the morning, 
the first prayer was at 445. And we prayed usually every three hours. So everybody would come to the chapel together? Yeah. yeah, the first started at 445. That would go for about 45 minutes. Then you go back to your room, do some more private prayer. Or what monks do this, what they call Lexio Divina. You prayerfully read scripture. Then at seven o'clock is Lord's or morning prayer. Mm -hmm. So we pray again for another half hour. And then you go back to your room, more private prayer. We'd have mass at nine. And at the nine, uh, that we'd have another prayer session called mid-morning prayer or terse, mm. third hour. Then, yeah. then, uh, then we usually do studies. You had to do some studying, reading at that point. I'd, and then at noon, we'd have uh, sext or midday prayer. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we'd have our main meal. Mm -hmm. Then we'd work, and then all afternoon, we'd work from one to about five. What kind of work? We'll work um, on the fields? And yeah, yes, we, uh, we, had, we had a garden, we had an orchard, we'd raise sheep. I usually mowed lawns, yeah. <laughs> so we did a lot of work. Then we had to, monks had to do everything. We had to do all the cleaning. We we were the work and the cooking. We had to do had to do all the work, and then we took a break at three for mid afternoon prayer or known, mm -hmm. and then uh, then we'd have uh, supper at six uh, five thirty, then we'd have vespers or evening prayer at uh, six thirty, mm -hmm. then we'd go back to our rooms pray, then compliment or night prayer at uh, eight fifteen. Is this the time of silence, private silence? Yeah, yeah there's a lot of quiet. And then uh, we finished that at 8.30, then we went to bed. You know, it was 8.30, <laughs> it was time to go to bed. Because you had to get up at 4, so there was, like, there was no happy hour. There was you no did that for seven years. Seven years. <laughs> there was no TVs. Wow. It was, so then you went back, and then you got up and did the whole thing all over again. Mm -hmm. you know, so it was, but yeah, it was a lot of quiet time. You spent a lot of time in your room, private prayer, private reading, quiet. a lot of emphasis on quiet. Uh, yeah. yeah, there was, uh, but it was a very, you know, I, I always say prepared me for the diocesan life. So I got very good prayer habits, reading habits. Then I got into, you know, so I think it prepared me for the priesthood. I'm going to take another quick break here, and then we're going to come back and talk about the uh, Archdiocesan Seminary and your life as a priest now. Okay. Talking with Father Tom Colucci. You're watching On the Block. Stay with us. Coming right back. Welcome back to On the Block. I'm Ed. This is Father Tom. And we've been talking about your life as a fireman, your life as a Benedictine monk, and now you've decided to become an archdiocesan <laughs> priest. And, uh, Hopefully this is it. <laughs> no more you, changes. You settled out. I'm running out of years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you go into the St. Joseph Seminary. Is, oh. that a, is that a tough transition going back to a life of study after everything uh, that you've I, done? You've got to study now, theology. Yeah, right? yeah, it was uh, very, very difficult. It was, uh, I was out of college 28 years. Wow. So getting the back end was a... Uh, very difficult and you know, getting used to it and everything was on computer now and I'm not used to that. I was one of the, I'm, I was still writing notes by hand, you know, and all these young guys all are doing on the laptops. I was like a dinosaur back there. Yeah. And then also everything was papers, you had to write papers. I had to write like five, six, 15 page papers every semester. And I came from civil service with the fire department, it was A, B, C, or D, when in doubt, pick C. And here I got to write 15 page papers. And your first two years of philosophy, which kind of made no sense. And I had to take a year of Latin, a year of Greek, Greek, so it was a lot of adjustments. I, I was older than most of the professors, sure. <laughs> and the guys were could be my sons. <laughs> so, but it was. But I, I got you know the first semester too was rough, but then I got used to it. The, mm -hmm. uh, I think the Lord gave me grace mm -hmm. and helped me with it. And they say you know God doesn't call the worthy; He makes worthy the one call, He calls. And I, and I just you know I got through the semester. All right, survived. And another semester, and yeah. I, you know things got a little bit better as I, I went along. But I had to work maybe a little bit harder. I did very well, and I ended up with three master's degrees. And I wrote a, and then when to get ordained, you have to write a thesis. I wrote a 70-page thesis paper on the Transfiguration. I oh my God. flunked out of college 40 years ago. <laughs> I couldn't spell Transfiguration. Now I'm writing a 70-page paper on it. So God gives you the grace. He calls you. It did well. It was a little bit of work, but uh, I enjoyed it. I had good classmates. It was a good environment. Any similarities between the living together with guys at a firehouse and then living together in the seminary with these guys uh, and the sense of camaraderie and yes well that's what it is you we're in it together so you have to have camaraderie you know at the firehouse we all try to get along some guys you might like a little better than the others mm -hmm. same thing with the seminary like you know you're gonna have your particular you know, friends that you're friendly with but we all try to get the in we get together 
pulled together as a team. And we had a lot of study groups for tests, and we had to take these big exams called the comps, mm -hmm. comprehensives, our third year. So we all worked together on that. So we were kind of like a team helping each other, yeah. my classmates. And they're all doing very well. They're all just different assignments. But yeah, there's, you know, there's yeah, camaraderie. We're in it together. It's a common task. Mm -hmm. and so it was a, a lot together. What do you there. remember about Ordination Day itself? Uh, it was uh, spectacular. I had, uh, you know, my whole family was there. There was probably about 300 firemen inside the cathedral. Wow. And then outside, there was probably about another thousand that were there. They had the two fire trucks, <laughs> two truck, they were on 51st Street, and 21 truck on 38th came there. They had this ceremonial 343 rig, that's a pumper commemorating the 343 guys that died on 9 11. They were there. I, I came out, there were the bagpipe bands are playing. <laughs> and I, So it was a very uh, spectacular day. Uh -huh. uh, family, friends surrounded it. It was just. Euphoria, yeah. and I had uh, it, it was a very great, great day. I had Cardinal a, Dolan was he yes. the ordaining prelate? Yes, Cardinal. What did he say to you? Do you have any uh, words of wisdom <laughs> for you? <laughs> uh, I just no, he, he's a very, he's a very uh, great, great guy. I've talked to him several times, and, and he was he was it was a proud day for me from all my classmates there. Yeah. It was just a grand, joyous day. The cathedral just got refurbished, so it looked beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. And uh, I was wearing the beautiful gold vestment that my, mm -hmm. my fireman friends gave me. And, so it was a very uh, great day. Well, last question, if uh, somebody, a young man, came up to you today and asked you uh, that he said he was thinking about becoming a priest, uh, what would you say to him? Would you say wait uh, 40 years like <laughs> No, 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 don't wait 40 years. No, don't get, get into it now, you know, don't wait till you're 40. No, uh -huh. best do it when you're young. Well, you go when the Lord calls you. Somebody calls in the first hour, the fifth hour, the late hour. That was just the gospel the other week. And mm -hmm. So whenever he calls you, you feel the call, go with it. But I, I, I would encourage them to, you know, exp Go, you know, you know, you don't have to sign up right away. Mm -hmm. you, you talk to a vocation director, and then they have retreats. Come, they have these come and see weekends. They do that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, talk to a priest. You know, so it's it's it ta it's vocation takes a few years. You know, mm -hmm. it may not be forty, but you know, <laughs> you know, to talk to a vocation director, talk to some priests, go on retreats. You know, to feed you a bit. You know, still carry on with your life and see yeah. when the when the call is strong. And I had a couple classmates that were in their late thirties. They did the same thing. They thought about it early. They yeah. Became a lawyer or a teacher or something, then they came on. But, but uh, those, that's what I would encourage, you know. But uh, you know, I think the Lord is calling a men to the priesthood. They just have to respond. So maybe putting it off. There's a lot of distractions today. Uh, but, but I think you, you have to talk to someone. Maybe go on a retreat. And and big thing is pray about it. Yeah. You know, pray about it. Pray over it. See where the Lord. And calls you were it. you were happy and you enjoyed being a fireman. Uh, are you enjoying being a priest? Yeah, I, I love it very much. I think I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, yeah, the people are wonderful. The, the other priests in my parish are great. I feel very fulfilled as a priest. Very, very, very busy. We, we, there's a lot going on, but I feel very fulfilled, very happy. I believe this is where God called me, and uh, I'm very glad he gave me the grace, the call, the grace, and I responded to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. It's a great story you have, Father. I'm <laughs> just, thank you so much for sharing okay. it with us today. You've been watching On the Block. We've been chatting with Father Tom Colucci, former fireman, former monk, and now an archdiocesan priest. Great story. Thanks for being with us today. Join us again. Yeah.